Alright lads, welcome back to Tarts of Iron 4 and the new order mod as the Principality of Camarovo in this episode hopefully to become the either Great or Grand Principality of Central Siberia. Now you guys haven't yet seen the previous two episodes, so if you had any requests, suggestions, statements, uh, advice, I have not seen it yet. So, uh, take that into account throughout the rest of this video, Like, because if, if you said on the previous two episodes, Hey Josh, do this, I haven't seen either of that yet. Because you guys haven't made it yet, basically. Now, like, like, I can't believe how quickly we conquered Central Siberia. We really just... Like, they did not make enough units whatsoever. Like, I think Nova Siberia's had like 44,000 men against our 144,000 men. That was crazy. Like, look how... Like, <laughs> we still have so much of the streets to go. It is uh, October 63, though. So, yeah, I think... Um, Usually Central Siberia unified really quickly. I think uh, in this game we're going to be kind of at the, around at the same general time frame of, uh, of the rest of Russia. Actually, yeah, pro probably not even then. Because, yeah, I don't think this mod has even started here. Stalina is here. Hopefully, probably, hopefully by now. October 63, is that, is that, a, is that a good time frame? Is that the right time frame? Yes. Big tent. Ooh. That is a lot of red support. Alright, yeah. Yagoda's putting in work in the Far East. I think I might declare... I might, I might um, get Magadan to declare war on... Uh, on Yagoda. Just to... Uh, just to kind of make it a bit difficult for him. I don't know what's going on, so I'm going to pause the recording a while. God damn it. I should have just used the console. And literally a second after I paused the recording, it, had, it went through. God damn it. Yes, we will prove our victories. That will subtract chaos. That is ideal. You're all the way up here. Can we move you down again? No. Read in progress, man. By the way, the minutes of the Bratsk Communal Council, we read this, did we not? Yeah. The minutes of the Bratsk Communal Council, 12 o'clock, administer Anatoly Be uh, Belezarov, 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 Belezarov convenes weekly meeting to dispense information regarding the king's new edicts. Uh, one o'clock, uh, farmer Natalia Antonova inquires about tax policy in relation to her husband's crops. In doing so, she refers to administrator Belezarov as companion Bele uh, Belezarov. One, okay, one o'clock again. Administrator Bele Belezarov, yeah. Belezarov corrects Natalia regarding the use of subversive terminology and proper royal titles. Ten past one, Deputy Mikhail Blinko interrupts Administrator Be Belezarov regarding the use of the term companion in pugning. In Pugning? Nah, nah, that's definitely not the word. In Pugning. In... God damn it. I'm gonna look this up on my phone. In Pugning. In, in Puning. The administrator for censorship of his subjects and fucking tyranny. Um, five past one. Oh, I, suppose, I suppose that's only one, yeah, one minute past one. Uh, five past one. Administrator Belezarov has Deputy Blinko removed from the premises and his title stripped. 
Ten past one, Deputy Mikhail Blinko's removal causes a significant discord amongst the crowd of Italia Orla begins to south questioning the council's authority to, to govern if it intends to control our mouths. Quarter past one, Administrator Belezorov directs Deputy Lazar Vinogradov to remove Vitaly Orlov for disorderly conduct. Two o'clock, following a heated standoff, Deputy Lazar uh, Vinogradov is struck by Yegor Nikitin. Deputy Vinogradov defends himself, striking Natalia and Tanova in the process. Three minutes past two, Kingsguard officers remove order, uh, restore order. <laughs> Opposite. At the frenzied request of Administrator Belezorov. Uh, three minutes past three. Natalia Antonova, Vasil uh, Vasily Orlov, Igor Nikitin, Deputy Lazar Vinogradov, Representative Luka Kovalev, Representative Yekaterina. Uh, it says, it says Yekaterina. It's probably supposed to be Yekaterina. Okay, Yekaterina. Uh, Soronika and Representative Alexander Nik Nikolev uh, vacate the premises. Ten past three. Alex uh, Administrator, uh, Administrator Belezorov adjourns the council due to an absence of representatives. Very well. A strange lot, these anarchists, indeed. Anarchists are weird. Any effects for that? I don't think so. Very well. Now we should be getting, what, plus three to our credit rating currently. End of realms, common Norwegian. I think, I don't, yeah, I don't think the South African conflict has even started yet, so. Mm, heavy lag. So, the, I don't, uh, the thing about the military is is that obviously we're going to have the workers uprising, so we're going to need to keep the military around, but like, the, it's also a fact that uh, that it is costing us a significant amount of money and running an 830 million deficit, which is not good whatsoever. Our credit rating is still rising, though, albeit very slowly. Seems to be having a particularly slow start. Two percent base uh, base stability, two percent base conflict support, one hundred seventy-five units of early infantry rifle. Thank you. <laughs> Royal commissars, fantastic.
This is quite bad. Feel free to skip ahead. Oh, would you look at that? We're actually moving. Oh, still seem to be incredibly slow. Now. Old history, new media. The cost to complete the chaos is affecting us. Mission will change by minus two physical power. Wow. Minus two, eh? Increases press rights, state press only policy effectiveness. Increases political parties, one party state policy effectiveness. Decreases worker discontent by three. The cultural campaign continued faster and faster, spread along by television and radio to corner to every corner of the map. Through films and posters, the princess and her advisors reminded the people that they were not men and women living in the ruins of an empire, but one part of a long, unbroken chain. For 1,000 years, their land had prospered. For 1,000 years, it had produced great art, science, and military feats under the rule of House Krylov. They would achieve glory again. Their story would never end. Indeed. I know a lot's happening in the world at the moment, so... This sign is all... Give the game a pass. Yeah, it seems to be getting a bit faster now. That's good. Thank God. Chaos in his land. Do we have anti-tank equipment in our divisions? Or rather, support anti-tank equipment? Not sure. We do. Okay, that's good. Fuck, can I do that? Once we get our next bit of political power, we'll find out what's going on. English civil conflict has begun. So what have we gotten so far? Does this tell you stuff? It does. 10.5% construction speed. 16.5% factory output, 1% resource extraction efficiency, 1% production efficiency cap, and 0% Hello, Lower coup in Norway. Polish uprising. Is that continually increasing? Because we're not at war. Kind of weird. Expansion into Africa. An ultimatum from the, from the Siberian Black League, eh? That's cute. <laughs> Warsaw Uprising. I'm going to assume that, that there was no Warsaw Uprising during World War II in this timeline. Prime Minister Juanda? Indonesia. I see. A man's tragedy is another man's opportunity. Mm -hmm. conflict begins. Okay, there we are. We seem to be rolling a little bit better now. That's good.
I will also delete some old saves just in case, just so, so that it helps. of the Africa Shield. That was quick. White and red fly in the buildings of Warsaw once again. Splendid. Last time, Civil War. Ah, oh, we missed our chance. Oh, that was all for nothing. Never mind then. Back to our uh, Can we raid anyone? No, it's a shame. No, oh, there we are. Going back. Quickly check all of this again. Make sure we're not spending too much in the army. Yep, we can't slash that any further. Alright. Kim Harahat studies the Titan in Indonesia. Java centric accelerationists. Is that a heckin' red flood reference? Republic of Ukraine and the Ukrainian state. They're all going after each other. Ukrainian state, I'm, I'm just going to assume we're Banderites. Yep, yeah, oh, you went. There we are. Yeah. Smash his fucking face in, Shumsky. Please. That is increasing. I think it should be 218. Now, the Velost system. Do the cost to complete all the occupation decisions will be multiplied by 80%. Not that that matters too much anymore. Our administrative efficiency will begin to improve. Our economy will become more centralized by 15. Gets when the rituals of the present. Every great story of conquest is a triumph of logistics of great networks of men and women working together on common cause. The princess knows this fact better than anyone in the kingdom. Over weeks she wove together the, dis the disparate peoples of the kingdom into something that would withstand the monsters that threatened to consume them. The, the result was not pretty, but victory rarely is. What Lydia created was a union between the new and the old, between peasant self-rule and military order, between the old Volosts of Kievan Rus and the Soviet administrative, administrative system. Uh, with this new model, she would beat back the darkness. Though there was much work still to be done, her efforts ensured Kemerova could act as a leading empire in central Siberia, staging ground for the fights, military and political, in the days to come. Ah, there is old Ark. Nice. Now, I will have to mute the game so that you do not get copyright struck for Paint Black. Now we'll put more released infantry into this template. Can we afford it? We can. Good. How do we somehow need more infantry equipment even though our manpower requirements aren't increasing? It's very odd. Now, we should be safe enough. Africa Shield intervenes in South Africa. Offend ratify security resolution 13. I think the Chetniks just wiped out the Reds. They did. It's a shame. Or is it? Yeah, I think I prefer the Reds, to be honest. Muscovine's dissolution. 
Such is destiny's will. I honestly think we, we could do with some trucks. Or some sort of motorized equipment. Yeah. Perhaps. Or maybe not. Yeah, actually not. No, maybe not. this. So I have to manually pick away with this? Okay, fair enough. Now, the rituals of the present. Mikal couldn't help but wonder if he was participating in some kind of game or theatrical play. Now, what do we have here? It's important. Scourge for loot. Absolutely. And that's it. This is definitely increasing. Friend chaos from spreading. If he was participating in some kind of game or theatrical play, being well acquainted with Lydia Krylov and having demonstrated his competence as an administrator, he'd expected to be chosen the uh, Nemesnik of this Valost. Such a ceremony he'd expected, which was odd, which was more odd. Uh, what, what was more odd was Lydia personally coming to oversee the rehearsal. Truthfully, the ceremony was quite harmless: oaths, kneeling, kissing, a coat of arms and sword, and receiving a special diadem, standard stuff. Then there were more unusual elements as well, such as passing through controlled flames and washing with pure snow. All this seemed to be a strange, bizarre whim of Zar Work. The second Lydia, nonetheless, treated the whole ceremony with the. Utmost, I think, utmost something. Utmost, I don't think it's importance. Utmost, utmost sentimentality, perhaps. Seriousness, I see. I will also take this decision. With the utmost seriousness, expressing critique until the rituals were performed to her satisfaction. When the rehearsal ended, Mikal relaxed, approaching Lydia to talk more informally. Both exchanged some more pleasantries as they exited the hall, and as Mikal looked back, he raised an eyebrow at the princess. Quite a curious ceremony is all this necessary. Absolutely, she affirmed without hesitation. Each aspect was approved by Zara Rourke the second personally, and he expects impeccable execution. Certainly, but he still wondered why such strictness. I respect his majesty, of course, but you are a reasonable woman. He risked a smile. Do you really believe all this nonsense? Lydia's face went still cold, and as she appraised Mikal Hardened, without question, I will offer you some advice if you still wish to be the Nemesnik. You better start believing in it, too. She stepped close to her voice, leaving no room for doubt, and you better start now. That would be a good idea. Why would you, why would you ever say that as you're getting a promotion? It's not a good idea. Now, Yuri the Long Arm gets into the cycle of history. Increased construction speed by one by one and a half percent. Okay, this will greatly increase the influence of Prince Yuri. Many years ago, the general made king begot a son. The boy Yuri grew up in a time of war and exile, of famine and defeat, of suffering and death. He came to know all the evil of the world, and instead of numbing his senses, he committed himself to thwarting it. He would be the good and just hero that his people needed. Like his father, Yuri took upon a quest. He dedicated himself to improving and expanding his father's domain, domain in Kamarovo. Guided by the greatest civil servants of the kingdom, he set forth to make this the city a modern place, protected from the petty scheming of his sister and the sinister machinations of the boyars. He knew that only by proving himself there could he hope to succeed his father. We shall once again prove our victories. Decrease. It used to be like 71 or 72. Interesting. Oh, let's see. We should decrease our production of improved anti tank equipment, seeing as how, especially seeing as how we'll be uh, removing anti tank equipment from the Support anti tank equipment, which is a size amount. So currently, right, we have, um, where is it? 261. Take out the support anti tank equipment. Go down to 189. That's a significant decrease. So we will slash it here and put it into support equipment. That's where we need it most. Like, if I was to call up a hell of a lot of men right now, how would it go? Tell me. Okay, that's, that's not a great showing, but... Aha! Seeking to make Ukraine their breadbasket, the realm created a graveyard. 
The Ukrainian SSR is knocked out. Rams Commissarius, Ukraine. Now, the cycle of history. While Lydia had always loved the history of ancient Russia, Yuri had always preferred learning about its more contemporary milestones, the October Revolution, the glorious victories of his father, the rise of the USSR, and what it and what would have become if history had turned out differently. Yet, ever since his father was crowned as Yuri II, the atmosphere of the resurrected medieval Russians had manifested, and Yuri realized that he would also have to deal with it. What was once history was now reality. Learning more of this history was much more interesting and informative than he'd expected. The young uh, uh, Karlevich didn't even notice how very soon the events of the distant past captured him as he leafed through multi-page volumes as days passed. Many inspiring episodes and valuable lessons were absorbed during these days and most importantly on these white pages Yuri was surprised to find the answers he'd been looking for once upon a time uh Knyaz Yuri Dolgoruki found himself on the outskirts of ancient Rus pushed aside from all the main centers of power of the Velikoy uh Knyaz uh, Zhevtsvo Instead of trying to conquer through fourth, Yuri created his own center of power. He built his land, established many towns, fortresses, and roads, enticing thousands of settlers to join from the southern lands without relying on the selfish boyars, a man who put the peasants before the noble. Now, almost a thousand years later, Yuri Krylov saw how he could employ this ancient experience. Decisions of the distant past were born anew, passing through the prism of his own knowledge and experience. Macedonian one. Um... And turning into new ideas, as he finished another book, Yuri grabbed a pen and began to write down his many thoughts. Yes, he wouldn't he wouldn't just use the ideas of the past, he would perfect them. But once was history, it becomes a new reality. Not a hawk lad. Macedonia is Bulgaria. This is weird. We'll once again divert supplies to the populace. Work with our subjects. Uh, subtract civilian chaos minus 25. Decreases work and discontent by three. Our administrative efficiency will begin to rapidly improve. The next labour was one of diplomacy. While the good king had learned, had earned much acclaim from his subjects for his achievements in battle, his son was untried and untested. Many feared that he would re recklessly remake their city, but that he would uproot the poor to support his fanciful designs. The prince set about combating these fears in every neighbourhood of the city. The good prince held court, gathering his subjects so that they could share their hopes and fears with him and his agents. Through these public hearings, the prince and his advisors harnessed the people's will and ensured the city grew in ways that respected the wishes of the people within it. Crown returns to Serbia, my god. The Algerian War. Nikola Klabic. Is it the same guy? Just with a shave? Now, revive the Kansi. Kemrovo increases its GDP by 5%, add two levels of infrastructure, and increases resource extraction efficiency by 3.5%. <clears throat> ah, Patov is here. Oh no, he still has to fight the Black League, never mind. The first labor that the prince encountered was one of stewardship. Though Kemrovo had once prospered as a mining town, the logic of empire meant it could not remain as such. The capital of a kingdom needed to be vibrant and diverse. It needed to be a place where many people of many trades could work and prosper. For many nights, the prince consulted his advisors and tomes. Then when, when uh, while reading of ancient Novgorod, in, uh, inspiration hit him. How could he, he could apply the long dead city's Kansi, its varied boroughs to Kamarovo. He could divide the city into several regions, each dedicated to a different trade or profession. Fantastic. Guild public controlism. Yuri is a bundle of sticks, just confirmed. He's basing Kamarovo around the, uh, around the professions. Ooh, I will take. Maybe new industrial equipment? I'm not too sure. Bowman has knocked out spare. Spare. Yeah, military professionalism is doing super well. Yeah, pro yeah, we'll go for industrial equipment, please. Whoa, what has happened to our production units?
we will get... Ah, oh, we can't have that yet. Fair enough. Hmm. Oh, there we are. It's back. Well, that is annoying. Now, let us... We have a decision here. Let the Pesadniks. Okay. Or the Boyars hold on. You see, I know, even though we are going for um, Rognada, I'm not going to sabotage us here. I am going to go for Elected Pesadniks, because it's clearly the better option. His sister and all the scheming boyars had entered into an alliance against him. Within days, the plans to remake came over unraveled. Public hearings received no visitors or hostile audiences. Funding for great works vanished. Construction stalled. In the end, all that remained of the prince's grand design were drawings on paper and the sad knowledge of what might have been. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. no. Elected Pesadniks. The cost to complete the cast is affecting us. Mission will change by minus five political power. Our administrative efficiency will begin to slowly improve. This will moderately increase the influence of Prince Yuri. Change in popularity of paternalism five percent. Decreases worker discontent by one. Through his tireless sacrifices, his, the prince completed his quest. Hearings re received positive responses. Merchants provided funding to support great renovations. The home of construction could be heard all across the city. But more than that, the prince uses his administrative skill to realize one more innovation. One a reform that person after person had called for him to implement elections. Rather than being led by nobles, the prince agreed that the people of Kemrova would be led by whomever they choose. The prince would not be subject to leaders subject, uh, selected by the accident of birth, but by skill. That is ideal. Elected nobles. Elected. We definitely need more artillery guns. Yeah. Divert supplies to the populace once more. Please tell me that's a border war. It's not. Well, yes, second time failed. You know what we're gonna do though? We're gonna just keep you on the border. Actually, no, yeah. One of you is going to lose, so it's not gonna be a thing again. Never mind. Back around Kemerovo. Roman conquers Goering. Can we once more change this template? Twelve and a half thousand men, that's, that's a good sized division. Nine threes are the way to go. Second, oh excuse me, Philippine Republic unites the Philippines. Glorious. Now, prove our victories. The nurse. Now, the nurse, Anastasia Abdulova, was a busy woman. Papers, papers needed filing, patients needed checking on, and doctors needed assistance. She had a little time for the crowd of politicians currently occupying the hallway. Excuse me, she said, shuffling through the crowd, including several nobles. She kept talking and, and pushing until they finally got the message and moved to her and moved to the side, letting her get through. Thank you, she huffed. Before continuing at a brisk pace, or tried to, a hand reached out through the mass of expensive clothing and grasped Anastasia's arm. Anastasia, is that you? To her shock, Princess Lydia's head attached to the body. Next to declare national emergency concerning South Africa. Uh... Attached to the hand which gripped the nurse's arm. Her face was uncharacteristically ast astonished, but also happy. Uh, what What are you doing here, Lydia? Anastasia started, I mean, Princess, she quickly corrected. Poorly curtsied. Oh, don't even start talking about poorly curtsies. Uh, poor curtsies, man. Have you ever seen Liz Truss's curtsy? Oh, it's like it's like an NPC that tried to squat, but cancelled the animation. 
fucking hilarious. And assumed a respectful sense. I'm a nurse at this hospital, princess. Please forgive me for my impoliteness. I meant no offense. Oh, uh, Lydia looked at her hand still holding Anastasia's arm and awkwardly let it go. I didn't expect to see you here. How are you? How is Alexi? I'm doing well. Alexi died two years ago, but our daughter, uh, Anastasia, blushed in embarrassment. Lydia has grown up to be a strong little girl. I'm glad to hear that. Lydia's face grew more pensive. It's been good to see you. She murmured, glancing around at the hospital. Sometimes I forget where I come from. It's been good to see you, see you as well, Lydia. A few more words were exchanged, but soon Anastasia continued on her way to those who needed her. Lydia's gaze followed her, wondering on a future that could have been. Two in Scotland, it always happens. A warrior with the heart of a healer. Do, do, does Lydia create some sort of like superhero thing around nurses or something? Super regional stage, maybe? Maybe regional stage, I'm not too sure. Now, I guess we can do more stuff. Good. We shall increase production quotas. Increases factory industrial capacity by 3.5%. Increases worker discontent by 5 Our GDP growth will increase by 0.1%. Now, Royal Manufactories, this is very strong, should have rushed for this. We will gain one production unit, Gor uh, Gorno Altesk will get the production of three grid power, increase construction speed by one and a half percent. Our industrial equipment, as well as our industrial expertise, will begin to rapidly improve. Unsatisfied, the prince persisted in his labours. He spent long days and nights with engineers and craftsmen, hearing their, face, hearing their fears of the kingdom's survival. He toured city streets, aware of the monsters pressing in on, upon his father's armies. He watched as shipment after shipment left came over for the front lines. Though he lacked the martial spirit of a sister, the prince knew he needed to act with the flourish of his pen. He granted each of Camarovo's largest factories the royal seal of approval. He would allow them to use government funds to expand their operations and divert activity toward military. Military production. Holy shit. Yuri is actually a militarist confirmed. Confirmed. Nice. Now. All flows through Kemerovo. Gets event to City Light. Our GDP growth will increase by 0.5%. Uh, this will increase our liquid reserves by 10% of, of our monthly income, totaling 8 million. Wow. Big box. Or is that... Yeah, technically we don't have any monthly income. So. Hey, what does that say? Council of the Russian Republic. Not all stories are ones of great battles and conquests of brave knights and fair maidens. Some of the greatest stories are about good men and their wits. They are about those who ignore the temptation of adventure for the hard work of governing and administration. Things appear to be very interesting in Masculine, so let's head over there now. Is this the guy who's pretending? No, no, never mind. Different guy. Oh, damn. You're new. Carol Strecker, I recognize your name. Have they all lost their descriptions? Ivan Besnov. Since w what happened to me called Gorbachev? Oh, the name of God. Okay. Um, <clears throat> they're, they're about those who ignore the temptation of adventure for the hard work of governing and administration. In the end, that was what Yuri's story was. He was no great warrior, no masterful strategist or tactician, but he was a man who listened to his people and sought to preserve their prosperity. Though there was much work still to be done, his efforts ensured Kamarova could act as the leading city in central Siberia, staging ground for the fights, military and political, in the days to come. Has Borman knocked out Hedrick yet? He has not. You need to hurry up and do that. Yeah, you really need to hurry up and do that. Ooh, prepare a raid against the Republic of Pavlodar. Do not mind if I do. Are we getting any weekly supplies? No, we are getting 8% weekly. Okay. City lights. 
In the morning, in the morning, Yuri personally checked out the new railway system that ringed Kemerovo and connected three freshly built large stations, one whose neo-Russian architectural style was more reminiscent of medieval stone palaces. In the afternoon, he visited the steel industrial complex under construction, supervising the progress of work when the day, bega when the, when they, when the day began to give way to the evening. Yuri finally let himself relax, riding in an open-topped Gaz 12 personally modified by him. Yuri drove from one street to another throughout the city. The whole Sloboda was built in such a way that people living and working here... There we are, pulling that out either. Uh, uh, people living and working here would, would be proud of their profession, an idea that, that Yuri learned from the Soviet urban planners. Get out the way. He, his, uh, his gaze caught in the red stars at the top of the gate. While Lydia tried to avoid Soviet symbols, Yuri loved them in the ornaments of city decoration. Soviet stars and ears of wheat now and then were intricately intertwined with tridents of rural kids and double-headed eagles. As the sun uh, was approaching the horizon, colouring the sky with orange hues, uh, Yuri changed his car ride to a walk. Warm wind and the thrill of the drive was replaced by the quieter atmosphere born from steady, steadily igniting lights of elegant street lamps. Uh, the, mu the muffled hubbub of human voices. Ooh, fantastic. Now, where was I? On the background of smooth sounds of music heard from cafes around. Behind all this leisurely promenade, a strange sense of security seized Yuri, something not experienced by him in many years. This feeling made the Karlevich exhale with some kind of chuckle from a sudden realisation. The last time he felt this way was in Vladivostok, his long-lost home. It seems that the home has found him again now in this strange and wonderful city. That's very nice. Yeah, I'm not out to actively sabotage the camp, like the principality, so like I did, you know, want Yuri to... Uh, or, or rather, I did, you know pick elected Pasadniks, because I'm, I'm not out to actively sabotage us, you know? No. I love how West Russia has just done fuck all. Like. <laughs> entirely. Work the terrible. This will greatly increase the influence of Princess Lydia. Gain base stability plus 10%. Back to gets one level of prison. Increases penal system incarceration policy effectiveness. Increases security reg regulated police policy effectiveness. Change the popularity of despotism 10%. As the war neared its end, the good king looked to the future. His armies had conquered many lands and many people. The king had to present an image to these people, to these new humble subjects. These lands were full of villains and thieves, and there could be no trust to be found in the peoples who inhabited the new conquests. The general made king would appear before them, uh, mighty and terrible, in the quest to restore order and peace to the lands. If the king would become a monster to whose new subjects was of no concern for, in the end, all that mattered was that they obeyed. And that's terrible. Democratic ghost coup in Paraguay. Rourke the Great. Political power plus 50. The smarter decision category would be disabled. Gets men united under the crown. Once there was a general who lost everything he knew to monsters. Ha! Pablo Dar is trying to raid back. We'll not back down so easily. He made great sacrifices. He broke uh, from the past. He bore the heavy weight of the crown. The good king had we has weathered the cold. Had weathered the cold. Um, the hunger, the darkness, and in the end had built a grand kingdom. It stretched from the realm of Barnall to his forest Tuva and the northern tundra. All of central Siberia had been unified under his crown. The king had secured his place in the legends of history. He had secured his realm. No matter if his reign continues for many years or less, he would be remembered as more than just a random dictator, but as a true leader and hero to the people. All hail the unifier king. All hail Rourke the Great. I can't believe how fast Moscow is unifying. It, it used to be that that like they still wouldn't be unified by the time by the time that Germany would have reconquered all of you know Poland, Oslan, Ukraine, Caucasian, but now they seem to be rapidly unifying. Like ideally there'd be some kind of middle ground. After the end Russian Republic. Ivan Besenov. See, it'd be cool right now. 
because like we're we're unified, right? Basically, I know we haven't actually done the thing yet, but we're unified for all intents and purposes. So, the Urals are unified. Russia hasn't done fuck on, right? But it would be cool if myself and fucking Batov could just march west, knock over everyone in our path, or at least you know integrate whoever is willing to be integrated, and just reclaim Moscow right now. Why hasn't West Russia started doing anything yet? It's March of 64, no one's doing a damn thing. What are you doing? That's just odd. You may, yeah, you haven't even gotten to your smutter tree yet. Name of God. Prevent chaos from spreading. Last decision. For the smutter. Finally! United under the crown. The Grand Principality of Central Siberia has now been united under King Rurik II. Long may he reign, formerly known as Major General Nikolai Krylov. King Rurik had come to understand his destiny, overcome his failures, and achieve what few had ever considered possible. The Siberian Black Army has been subjugated. The anarchist experiment rendered a failure. The traitor General Nikolai Andreev has been brought to justice. And Krasnoyarsk reintegrated. Novosibirsk led by the Siberian Falcon, Alexander Kaprishkin. Now serves King Rurik in his conquests with its vast industry, population, and resources. The People's Revolutionary Council has been defeated. The, the public control has caused Delta yet another blow. Tomsk, the last remnants of the Central Siberian Republic, were now made a loyal subject under the king. With all of Central Siberia now united under the King of Rus, King Rurik now stands as a powerful contender for uniting all of Russia. As unlikely as it may have seemed once upon a time, King Rurik's eccentric persona, beloved by the common people, is now well known across Russia and beyond. Who knows what the future holds for this glorious glorious realm now that it may very well hold the fate of all of Russia in its hands. Of course, King Rurik's dreams are not yet achieved, and other contenders still threaten his majesty and his realm from both the east and west. Despite these victories, the Grand Principality of Central Siberia is not safe yet. Many spectators called Rurik mad and laughed at his dream of uniting Russia. Now King Rurik is the only one laughing, laughing from his grand and mighty throne as he prepares to bring all of Russia under his rule. Long live the king. Long live Russia. So, as soon as we get our loot and spend it, we shall unify. Or rather, unite, you know, yeah. Not, not the whole of Russia, but some of it. A good portion of it. Second largest portion. Now we'll go for new schools, I think. I'll go for industrial investments as well. Go on, so. I won't take anything else here. I would take focus on research, but because it doesn't spend money, it feels like cheating if I give myself political power. Form the Great Principality of Central Siberia. Yes, it's still the Grand Principality. <laughs> okay. Don't know why you've changed it in the decision tab, but... Who knows? Four research slots, eh? Very nice. Very strong. Why? That's missing a thing. Oops. Now, Kemerova Unify Central Siberia. Reports from the land of Central Siberia are conflicting and uncertain, but what is for certain is that the region has experienced unprecedented upheaval with the expansion of the warlord state of Nikolai Krylov. The former Soviet general had sided with the fledgling Central Siberian Republic before defecting during the Siberian War, establishing his own clique and giving himself the title of Supreme Ruler, Autocrat, and King of Rus. Uh, King of Rus. Rurik II, after the medieval prince that founded the Rurik dynasty, this unusual identity he has assumed has now become well known in Russia and abroad, as his kingdom has wrestled control over wide swaths of land. Other nations look with awe at this new and absurd faction that now has a shot at Russian unification. Okay, we're probably not that well known in Russia and abroad, we just unified. Right, 
Russian truth, yeah. Oh, and we, need to, we, need, we do need to do internal politics first. Fair enough. That, that makes things much more simpler. Let's get a... Actually, no, let's just fold you in. Never mind. are about to deploy, which is good. No, Kingdom of Contradictions, political purpose. 50 gets them into family feud. Once, a long time ago, Russia was a land of valor and loyalty, but, the, with, but with the ages came decadence, and the people forgot their roots. Bundle of sticksism, redism, democracy, it's all the same. Wolves who would lure the Russian into, the, uh, lure the Russian to their lair. The nation's survival lies at the source of mighty kingdom, led by just Tsar, uh, just king. Tsaruk II, in his eternal majesty, shall waste no time in healing the wounds of Russia, starting here in Siberia itself. But Rurik II is understanding of his people's needs. He will not embrace decadence, but take the best of all worlds, help the workers, not because of revolution, but out of benevolence, maintain the old ways of not corrupt them like the bundle of Stixists. Give the people justice without compromising the rule of the Tsar. Some may find this style of rule erratic, irrational even, but they are blind to the future, which is the past, ignorant of tradition, which is perpetual. Hail Tsar Rurik II, the monarch of all Rus, king, a shield of Siberia, king of kings. Okay, now, now West Russia is kicking off. Ah, the revival of Norilsk. With the age of warlordism slowly coming to a close in central Siberia, with the resources of the region firmly under our control, it's time for us to move north to reconnect the resource-rich areas of Norilsk to, to the rest of our na uh, nation-state. Formerly infamous for its expansive use of forced labor during the days of the Soviet Union, since its collapse, the region, has slow the region slowly fell into disrepair. Finally being lost to us when the Siberian War led to a collapse of the Soviet rump state. Formed after the Second World War, now we have a chance to reclaim these territories for our people, bring its bountiful riches back into Russian hands. King Control becomes owner and controller of Norilsk. Very nice. Fantastic. Reconnect the roads, we certainly will. Also, give myself a fuck ton of political power. Oh yeah, it's spending time, baby. Alrighty. Am I arsed with that? You know what? I am arsed with that. Oh, did I fuck it up? I did. Research. I, I frequently do that. I don't expand the power grid. Initiate propaganda programs. Do that. Power farm instructors. Encourage agricultural mechanization. Improve healthcare network. Fantastic, that's new. And state poverty relief programs. Import heavy machinery. Allocate education funding. Invest in scientific research. Improve worker training. We're already out. Fucking hell. Improve worker training. Invest in. We'll come back to that. Prioritize military industrial development. Now reconnect the roads. I'll read that in a second. Reviving Norils, the remote areas in the north of central Siberia were left to rot in the anarchy that followed the collapse of the region's central authority and the uh, descent into warlord and following the Siberian wars without any functioning body with the resources to maintain the old Soviet facilities. The riches of Norilsk have laid dormant for a decade beyond the reach of any of the Russian warlords that laid claim to the lands. Now that some manner of stability has returned to the region, uh, the new government has set out to reclaim the region and restore to it to its former economic potential. If successful, the riches of Norilsk will go a great way towards our efforts to reunite and rebuild Russia. Reconnect the roads. The areas surrounding the region's mineral deposits are in tatters. A decade of neglect has left the roads in complete disrepair, and most of the facilities they used to lead to are, in direct, are, in, are derelict at best and utterly dilapidated at, dilapidated at worst. Before we can bring in machinery to properly restore these, we've made plans to send out a force of military engineers to restore the main road links to working condition once more. Uh, command power minus 25. Active for 120 days, Norilsk gets one level of infrastructure, the production of three chromium, Leo Sibirsk gets one level of infrastructure, and one victory point is added to Sibgrad and Okchibirsky. Okchibirsky, yeah. Now what should we do with all of this? Так 
287,000, we can get another 476,000 and we'll get another 150,000 on top of that once we click the uh, decision when we're going for the Far East and of course we'll get men in the meantime as well. So how many men can we have? Hmm. Okay. This is what I'm going to do. Okay, this is, this is taking a massive nosedive. Support equipment doesn't seem to be a problem. I'm going to slash this by three. Slash that by two. Slash that by three. And slash this. Put that down to two. And with that, we're going to drop this down to... to be swilling factories. Yeah, look at all these resources. Actually, no, no. I don't want to half-arse things. No. That's what we'll do. Quickly go to the economic tree, see if we get anything here. Here's what we'll do. Look at the railway system. Okay. That's nice. Now, let me just the headphones. I'm getting sore. Alrighty, we shall come up here and do invest in construction. There we are. 120 days, construction speed was 30%. This should be closing. Oh yeah, we're still doing that, that's fine. We are of course still getting building skills. Good. Now, the coming storm. In the frenzied push to reunify Siberia and restore it to rightful dignity, a whisper has grown as the light... Train you up. Ah, yes, right. I need to come back and do the... Uh... Come back and do the ring. Can I put more of you in here? Box. Just the one, then? I can't even afford one of them. God damn it. It's annoying. Oh, it's because we're training up a lot of them. That's fair enough. Now, the coming storm. Now, sword to its, its rightful dignity, a whisper has grown as the light has gained purchase. So, too, is our shadow festering upon the inherent cruelty in our actions. It has waited for a moment to strike today and emerge from the dark, boldly declaring, I was, I am, I will be. Workers across the central Siberian industrial zones have begun a massive coordinated general strike, citing continually poor conditions, unfulfilled promises, and unrepentant cruelty by bosses. It appears the drive to return. Civilization to the Russian waste has come with many drawbacks as the lofty dream of a united Russia becomes less alluring when one cannot feed his family or keep all his limbs intact. Uh, 
Additionally, with the return of normalcy to the region, the worker himself seems to become less valuable, simply a pawn towards the eventual goal. Already work has ground to a halt, demands are being made, and old scores are being settled. While some in our government may be sympathetic to the cause of the strikers, it is undeniable that we cannot tolerate a crippled economy, especially considering the always precarious position of Russia. The strikers are numerous and militant. Unless we can come to some kind of deal and show our workers some tangible piece of the prosperity we promise, we must brace for the storm to come. Ooh, Comey managed to successfully integrate Vologda peacefully. That's a big gain right there. Probably have even 200,000, over 200,000 men at this stage, too. Wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, maybe. Did the AB just go after Biatka? You did. Why aren't you advancing then? You've advanced in one or two provinces. Anyway. Ha. You're all, yeah, you love to see it. You love to see it. Harring at Cal underscore general strike. Trans resource uh, gain efficiency minus 35%. Construction speed minus 20%. Factory output minus 25%. Need of consumer goods plus 10%. It gets them in the eye wall. Ukrainian Soviet Socialist, uh, Socialist Republic is restored. Great reversal, bygone era, Soviet origins. The ideology of Ukraine declaring his belief in na na national realism, emphasizing the continued liberation of the Ukrainian people. See how the realm will retaliate. Liberation comes at a cost. Nice. How many do you have? Oh, you might actually be able to put up a bit of a fight. A family feud. Now, which, okay, no, we have to keep going down here, it's fine. You know, start with Family feud. As you can see, Father, our domain now stretches from Tatarsk in the west of Bratsk in the east. For the first time in several weeks, our forces have reported minimal resistance to our Boris Krylov trailed off as he, looked at his, as he looked to his father. The king looked deeply troubled, his eyes distant and cold. Work the second seemed to care little about the subject at hand, and it was obvious his mind was focused on something darker. Father, what troubles you? Uh... Father, what troubles you? Uh, you've been too quiet today. Work the second eyes snap to his son. It's your siblings, Boris. What the hell am I supposed to do with them? Their disputes grow more venomous and destructive. Uh, more uh, venomous and destructive by the day, and I can't bear to watch today longer. Boris walked away from the map. He had been presenting inside as he took a seat next to his father. The old king sounded utterly defeated. I wish I could uh, tell you. You know, I was number one for politics, father. Politics, you think this is about politics? Yuri and Lydia, my own flesh and blood, have become enemies, and I've done so little to stop them. What kind of father stands by while his children go to war? I woke the second sound as though he was on the verge of tears. Boris put a reassuring hand on his father's shoulder. You've done what you could, father, as much as it pains us to see them fight. This may be the only way they can settle their differences. The king's eyes grew distant once, uh, grew distant once more. Perhaps you're right, Boris. It's just they used to be so close. Trouble on the horizon. Big military parade. Total power plus 50. Fantastic. Now... I remember when the, when the, when the, the picture of Subas uh, Kandra Bowles lying on the floor was Peter Griffin. That was fucking funny, you know. The eye wall. The severity of this general strike has expanded into something entirely into entirely new dimensions. Following a lack of progress towards any kind of resolution and continuous violence, the workers have been caught up. Have been uh, the workers have taken up arms. Raiding, can, raiding weapon stockpiles, looting old sellers, and outright stealing has become widespread as arms and ammunition began to be passed among militants. Already workers are organising themselves into general defence committees. This is an extremely dangerous situation and the spectre of uprising hangs in the air and must tread more carefully than we have ever before, while at the same time moving as quickly as possible to secure ourselves. If we do not act, this could be the end of all things, bastards. Congregating where the heaviest amount of industry is to be found. Uh, fellas? What are these units going to do? That's better. Caffeine flow. Luxuries such as tea and coffee were once rare commodities during the chaos of the late 50s and early 60s, only available to those with both money and connections and utterly out of reach for most of the population. However, as Russia stabilised, access to the global economy has drastically improved. Now, once rare commodities are being imported in increasingly large amounts, chocolate, fruits, foreign wines, and of course, coffee and tea. Now, access to caffeinated beverages is no longer a luxury restricted to the privileged few, but with an, but an increasingly common if still pricey drink of choice for many of our citizens. A toast to our future success. 
What port we bring you in through? Not, not, definitely not a port. No. Bring you up through Central Asia, maybe. Bring up through China, probably China. Yeah. Call for uprising. Comrades, unlike the assholes that run Siberia, I will not lie to you. The truth is simple. So simple I don't need any fancy language to explain it to you. It is a truth that any Russian child knows. There is something wrong with those that lead. You all know the kind of men I am talking about. Those that promise safety, promise prosperity, promise uh, what don't they promise. They've been doing it since even before the great patriotic conflict. Now when our country lies in ruins and our people scrounge at the dirt, what, sec what action do our leaders take? They promise. I, for one, am sick of the promises, sick of the lies, sick of the barbarism. So right here, right now, I'm going to be honest with you. I am not your leader I, and I never intend to be. I am simply a man as, who, as you are who wishes for the cruelty to stop. We have an opportunity to forge a new Russia where one where each man truly is equal. One without leaders to get it. We will have to fight. However, the men of Central Siberia have nothing to lose. It is we who keep production flowing. Us who ensures their bullets spread and steel arrives on time. In the name of all the dead children, all the widows, all the crippled sons, to hell with their promises. Can you all just calm down? <laughs> is everyone in position? Smear, no? hmm. As ready as they'll ever be. Get through the revolt of Novosibirsk, gain base conflict support plus 20%, gain base civilians even minus 20%. Now the revolt of Novosibirsk, the state of affairs in Novosibirsk and its surrounding territories has reached a breaking point. It seems that the fires of revolution are now bursting in the region. Following our subsequent attempts to calm the striking workers of Novosibirsk, the aforementioned workers appear to have reached their limit and have broken out an open revolt. Distressing news by itself, it is further compounded by the fact that the outlying territories around Novosibirsk and the city itself encompass major industrial capacity and a large population. An increasingly major threat to our new nation, this workers' revolt only continues to grow stronger every day. We must extinguish the flames of revolution before it is too late. Just when you thought the problems in Novosibirsk couldn't get any worse. See, I don't really see it happening in Novosibirsk because, like, Prokushkin was cracking down hard on the workers. Like, the mega corporations were serious force. And probably more likely to happen in Bratsk and Tomsk. Just when you thought the problems in Novosibirsk couldn't get any worse. I was about to say, why are units back there? No, those are their units. That is unfortunate. Smear, no? Well, let's wrap this up. This cost the cost of 50 because yeah, I can take that to be honest. Let us send the two of you. Slusher! Slusher! Smirna! Paraguay and Bush War. Host. Doctrine's available, fantastic. Massive bombardment. Line artillery soft attack plus 15%, hard attack plus 10%. How is the recording? I never checked. Nice, it's great. But alright, let's this is where I'm going to leave this episode where over an hour. Almost 10% into, no, not 10%, never mind. Almost 10 minutes into the next hour. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider liking, subscribing, as well as commenting down below. I shall see you in the comment section of this video, and I shall see you in the next video. But until then, goodbye.